This here drive ruined my life a little bit. Found it. Yes. Here's the thing with rugged drives, in my opinion, anyway. So they're awesome. You can bring them everywhere you go. You can stick them in your camera bag, in your suitcase. You have them on set, on location. You're using them on the airplane. Woo hoo! Good times to be had. The only issue is if this thing crashes, good times not to be had. You're done. There's no way to get this back. You can send it to a data recovery center and like cross your fingers and hope that they can, you know, finagle some kind of <laughs> some kind of miracle in their clean suits. I don't know why I did this. I just whenever I think of a clean suit, I, I think of some guy walking. <laughs> anyway, you're done. There's there's no backup. There's no safety. This is the backup. But what I see a lot of people do and what I did myself, uh, <laughs> this goes from being the backup to like the main source. You edit a vlog on this and the next thing you know, you've got this plugged in for the next project and then you're editing off this again and then you need to go downstairs so you bring this with you and then before you know it, all of the files are on here and this thing just <laughs> implodes on you. Take it from me, I had that happen. It sucks so bad. The other thing too is you don't want to you don't want to load your camera bag up with this. Like this is heavy. When you rather substitute these for just like one small one in case and then like fill your bag with other like goodness, <laughs> with other lenses and stuff that you might actually benefit from on a shoot instead of just packing it full of hard drive media. Cuz the thing is like these are heavy. The more terabytes you get, the bigger the drive, right? This is five terabytes, I think this is two. This is two as well, but now it's small, but this is USB-C, this is Thunderbolt, you've got different cables. The problem with this is they're great, but they very quickly become a bit of a headache if you have too many of them. And everyone starts here, and then they get this, and then this, and then suddenly your workflow becomes like 15 of these drives, and that's what you want to avoid. Now I know I get a lot of questions of people saying, can you define workflow and what do you mean by workflow? And essentially workflow is just like your process of finishing a project from start to finish. Like what is your workflow entail? How do you go about backing up the files, shooting the files and like organizing them and then editing them and then what do you do after that? That's, that is workflow. And when you get into having too many of these, your workflow slows down. You're trying to find the time, the label. You're trying to find which one is what. Was this, did I go to the ice caves with this driver? Was it, let me plug it in and find out. All that stuff slows down your workflow. It can get overwhelming. I was deleting all the B-roll from my vlogs. Like I would shoot a vlog and then like delete it. I would save the finished file, but I just didn't have enough space. As cameras get bigger and cameras get better and your everything is shooting 4K and 8K and file sizes are massive and different codecs, you need a better solution than like 17 rugged drives. So enter the RAID. Now, when I used to hear people talk about RAID drives, like you should back everything up on a RAID. I was just like, I don't know computer programming. I don't, that goes over my head. I don't want to talk about it. No, it was just something that like I wanted to avoid for the longest time. But then I didn't want to repeat history and have what happened to me <laughs> with this thing happen again. And then the next vlog would be me going, Guys, I lost it all again. I just, I wanted to stay away from that. So I got the Lassie six big raid. Now the benefit with this thing is it has six different hard drive bays. Now the one I have is 48 terabytes, 48, that's 48,000 gigs separated into drives that are eight terabytes a piece. So RAID stands for Redundant Array of Independent Disks. Okay, so when I take this out of the box, I'm gonna set it up with something called RAID 6. I like RAID 6 because it, it does this. Two of those hard drives in there, remember I told you there's six different bays made up of eight terabyte drives. So right away, RAID 6 is gonna take two of those drives, so 16 terabytes, and it's they're spoken for. I cannot use them now. So my 48 terabytes goes down to 32 gigs. Those two extra drives are now doing some kind of wizardry to make sure that if those, if this thing crashes and it just gone, everything's gone, those two drives will work together to rebuild that entire library of files and archives that I've lost. 
Now, while that's going, while they're recreating that archive, sometimes that drive itself that you used as the backup can corrupt with a read or write file. And if that corrupts, when it's trying to rebuild what already corrupted, you're still done. The whole thing is still useless. So with RAID 6, that's why it uses two extra drives for a backup. So if that first one fails trying to back everything else up, that next one then picks up the slack and hopefully rebuilds the whole thing. So that's RAID 6. Now if that extra backup drive fails and you lose everything, I would recommend finding a new hobby. Uh, just pick a sport and give it your all. I mean, at this thing's top speed, it will write over like a gig a second, which is absolutely incredible if you're a video editor. You can edit 4K footage right from this plugged into your laptop without having to use any of the hard drive space from your desktop or your laptop. It's just, it's an incredible piece of hardware. So now, not only do I benefit from having 48,000 gigs at my disposal, but all of that stuff is now backed up. I can edit straight from this. It's so much faster, there's fans inside, and if anything does go wrong, the chances of me getting that stuff back without even having to send it to some sort of data center are so much higher than they were before. So for anybody that is getting into video editing, for anybody that is getting into vlogging, for anybody that is gonna be shooting a ton of content, be it that you're a photographer or a filmmaker, whatever, if you're shooting a ton of content, having a RAID system is smart. It's the smart thing to do versus just stockpiling dozens of these over time. That's not, that's not the long game. We wanna play the long game here, not the short game. So let me show you real quick how I actually organize these files. It's, it's not very hard at all. It's just a system I've been using for years and years and years now, and it works really, really well. I can find pretty much anything at a moment's notice. All right, so there's not much to it when it comes to archiving files and creating folder structures and that kind of thing. I've been doing the same thing for like the last Oh, geez, I've probably been doing it since 2008. I haven't changed my ways since, and it's worked pretty well for me. I'm able to find pretty much any folder, any file, any photo within you know minutes of being asked about something specific. So here's what I do. This right here is the big RAID that I was showing you guys, the six drive, 48 terabyte RAID. So when you click on it, this is what I have as my organization right now. The first thing I do every single year is create a new folder for that year. So if 2018 just started and it was January 1st, this is what I would do. If I was going to Iceland on January 1st, I would make a folder called Iceland 2018. Every day that I was there, I would make a new folder for that day. So January 1st is the first folder I would make. If I was there again, the next day, I would make January 2nd. Then I would make January 3rd, so forth and so on. So let's say I was there for four days. I would make four folders. Now for each day that I was there, depending on what I was doing, I make a folder for every single camera that I used that day. So if I used my 1DX Mark II, I would make that folder. If I used the C200, I would make that folder. If I had a GoPro, so forth and so on. And the same thing for a Mavic, maybe if I got some Phantom 4 Pro footage from a friend, whatever. And let's just say someone was shooting with a 5D Mark IV. So this is a pretty intense file structure right now, but that's what I would have for day one in Iceland. Now, when I went into 1DX Mark II, I would make another folder called Photo, and I'd make another photo called Video. Inside Photo, I would have Raw for all my RAWs, full size, full size right there for after I edited some of the RAWs and then final edits and Instagram. So I know that seems like a lot. You're like, wow, like you just created literally in the last two minutes, like 16 folders. But this way, everything's organized. I'm never not gonna be able to find something at any given moment. Same thing when I go into video, I would just dump in all the video clips from that day, it's fine. So going all the way back, we open up this hard drive, double click. We have 2017, 2018 is when I went to Iceland. Oh yeah, I need photos from, I think that was on day one. I think I used my 1DX. Uh, there were definitely photos and I need the raw file. Boom, accessed instantly. Or same thing, if I need, oh, that was the photos from the 1DX and I think they were final edits here. Oh no, I need the Instagram sized post. Oh, okay, no worries. Boom, Instagram post. 
That's how I make my file structure, and it's pretty much the same across the board. So if I was importing phantom footage, I would have raw, because they come in really, really high res, and then I convert those files so Premiere can edit them easier. I convert them into ProRes, so I usually make a folder called Converted. So I know that the raw is the original files from the drone and converted are files ready to be edited. So I do that with everything. And the same thing goes for one 5D Mark IV. If I only had footage from 5D Mark IV, I'd make video and inside video would be all the clips from the 5D Mark IV. If we take a look at my 2017 folder, now keep in mind, I just created this RAID archive, so it's, it's fairly new, it's not very full yet, but if we click on 2017 and go over to Kenya, you can see I've already got Belfast, Italy and Switzerland, New Brunswick, Vancouver, MISC tools and editing assets, and then archived footage. But if we go into Kenya, you'll see I have July 2nd, July 3rd, July 4th, July 5th, everything is organized into what I did that day. So if July 6th, I only used the 1D, I double click on that, I've got my photos from July 6th, and I've got my video from July 6th. So I know that's all I was using that day. So that is it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video more so. I hope you got something out of it. Don't let, don't let what happened to me happen to you. Trust me, it's the worst thing ever. You feel like you wanna throw up. If you guys have any questions, leave them below, but hit that like button if you got something out of this and you liked it, smash it if you so desire. Subscribe if you aren't already, and, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.